This video describes a typical 25 million ton per year stockpiling system for receiving coal either by truck or train and storing it before loading it onto ships. Ground storage in this example is about 2 million tons and allows for separation of different grades of coal. The stockpiling system involves specialized machinery for unloading, stacking, reclaiming and the subsequent transport of coal to a buffer or surge silo. All conveyors are fully enclosed with the exception of the yard conveyors which must remain open to allow for stacker reclaimer operation. The transfer towers are also enclosed with modern dust collection and suppression systems. The primary method for delivering coal to the stockpile is by train. Up to 140 cars can enter the site and proceed around the perimeter to a dumping station on the opposite side. After discharging the coal, the train cars continue forward and exit at the same point that they entered. A double rail at the entrance allows one train to enter as another leaves. The train is emptied by moving on to a tandem rotary dump. Two cars are locked down and rotated to deposit their load into the hoppers beneath. Note that the cars being rotated are not disengaged from the rest of the train. Their couplers are designed to allow rotation while remaining connected. Trucks enter on the side of the stockpile site and proceed halfway around the perimeter to a dumping station on the opposite side. When unloaded, they enter a turnaround and exit via the same road. The trucks drive directly onto a dumper ramp. When the truck is secured, a hopper cover opens and the ramp raises the vehicle for dumping the load into the hopper. The ramp is then lowered and the truck driven off, leaving the system ready for the next vehicle. After the truck and train dump stations, the coal travels on conveyors beneath the road and rail lines and into a transfer station. From there it normally proceeds to a series of three stacker reclaimer units. The stacker reclaimer is a key element of the stockpile operation. Each one can traverse a 750 meter yard conveyor. It starts by moving into a position where the stockpile is to be located. From a transfer tower, the coal travels along the yard conveyor and rises up to the stacker reclaimer boom on a tripper. It then descends through a chute and onto the boom conveyor. The coal continues along the boom and discharges to form the stockpile. Together, the three stacker reclaimer units can create four stockpiles with a combined storage of over 2.5 million tons. When a ship is ready to receive coal, the stacker reclaimer retrieves it from the stockpiles. The rotating bucket wheel on the end of the boom draws the material into a chute and onto the conveyor, which operates in the reverse direction to that used when stacking. The boom slews and advances and cycles to reclaim a layer of the stockpile. The slewing motion is exaggerated here for clarity. In actual practice, the operator keeps the bucket wheel in the stockpile while advancing to maintain the flow of coal. After a layer of coal is retrieved, the boom is lowered to reclaim the next layer. A boom loading skirt is used to guide coal onto the conveyor when stacking. When reclaiming, however, the skirt is raised to allow the coal to pass beneath it. The coal then passes through a chute to the yard conveyor below. After reclaiming, the coal travels along the yard conveyors to a series of transfer stations. Each yard conveyor is capable of handling 6,000 tons per hour. Any two of the three stacker lines can deliver coal to the cross yard conveyor for a total 12,000 tons per hour. The crossyard conveyor leads to a transfer tower which passes coal to the outhaul conveyor. After traveling along the outhaul conveyor, the coal enters the surge silo. When a ship is available for loading, the overland conveyor transfers coal from the surge silo to the ship loading facility. The conveyor is enclosed in a raised gallery. This protects the equipment from the weather and minimizes disruption to wildlife, vegetation and watershed patterns. Shiploader selection is influenced by rate requirements, vessel size, and marine structure. In this arrangement, a continuous pad supports two traveling shiploaders, which allows a shorter dock face. 
To provide clear access to the cargo holds, the self-unloading ship's boom is slewed over the side of the vessel. Once clear, the holds are opened and the shiploaders move into position. Having the dual shiploader arrangement reduces loading time and allows the vessel an earlier departure. The shiploaders are fitted with discharge trunks with slewable trimming spouts. These assist in filling the cargo holds to capacity. The trimming spout is hinged to change trajectory and slewable to allow material to be thrown into any direction. Movements of the spout can be controlled by either electric or hydraulic actuators. The linear actuator allows the spout to be either fully engaged or disengaged. The spout can also be lined with a variety of materials to suit flow and abrasion. Trimming spouts are particularly useful when upper tank structures overhang the cargo holds. 360 degree slewing allows the operator to maneuver the spout into hard to reach areas. The extended downreach of the loading trunk reduces dusting and allows more efficient placement of the material in the holds. Cargo hold subdivision allows a variety of cargoes to be carried. The EMS Tech feeder gates on the self unloading ship allow materials from different holds to be blended. When loading is complete, the loaders are slewed back over the dock. The boom is then slewed back over the ship deck and put into the park position. This video describes the EMS Tech self unloading system for bulk carriers. Unlike traditional bulkers, self unloaders are not as reliant on shore based unloading systems. The self unloading ship comprises a series of holds that are separated by bulkheads. The holds typically have two series of openings aligned on the port and starboard sides of the ship. The ship's holds use gravity feed to discharge the load through their base. The flow from each of the openings is controlled by actuation of a gate. Each of the gates is independently controlled with hydraulic actuators or cylinders. A conveyor passes underneath each row of gate openings. Each gate is fitted with a pair of shear plates that meter the flow onto the tunnel conveyor. As the gates are opened, the shear plates define the cross section of deposited material. The surface angle is defined by the shear plates on the top and the angle of repose on the side. The feeder gate provides the operator with the means of accurate rate control while minimizing dusting and the risk of spillage to the tank top. Material is simply pulled from below the hopper opening at a controlled rate. For larger lump material or poor flowing cargoes, the operator simply increases the gate opening to allow larger lumps to pass or prevent stable arches from forming over the opening. The discharge rate is controlled by adjusting the belt speed. This is particularly attractive for applications demanding varied discharge rates with poor flowing cargoes. The operator can stop and restart the belt with the gate open. 
Material flowing onto the tunnel conveyors makes its way to the stern of the vessel. A smaller pair of transfer conveyors directs the flow to the center of the ship. One of the most important and innovative parts of the self-unloading system is the sea loop elevator. The sea loop elevator consists of inner and outer belt loops. The speed of the belts is synchronized so material entering at the bottom is sandwiched between them and carried to the deck level. The belt separation is exaggerated here for clarity. The material leaves the sea loop elevator and drops onto the boom conveyor. The boom conveyor is typically capable of luffing through an angle of 18 degrees. The boom typically slews through an angle of 90 degrees to both port and starboard sides of the vessel. The mooring structure for self-unloaders tends to be quite simple and light in comparison to that required for mobile grab cranes or continuous ship unloaders. While the receiving hopper is traditionally fixed to the wharf, a rail-mounted mobile hopper is illustrated here. Mobile hoppers are particularly useful when working with a variety of bulkers or hybrid self-unloaders. The hopper is moved into an appropriate position and the discharge boom slewed into position over top of it. Although shown open here for clarity, the discharge conveyor is typically covered. This reduces both dust and the trail of spill that's common with grab-based discharge systems. The receiving hopper can also include dust reduction equipment. This hopper is fitted with a bar-type grizzly to stop tramp iron from entering and damaging the receiving or plant systems. In this example, the in-haul conveyor leads to a stacker reclaimer system, a common sight at thermal generating stations around the world.